It's time for my roommate's McWake up call. Who'd I get? Bobby Jenks. Let's go. Come on, let's go. McDonald's wake you to something delicious, like any two hot McGriddles for just three dollars. This is ABC 7 News at 10, Chicago's number one news. Two members of the Jesse White Tumblers have become victims of crime. Willie Williams III was shot and killed in a mall parking lot. Alan Servillian was stabbed at a CTA stop. Good evening, everyone. Ron's off tonight. Servilian's family is saying that there has been an arrest in the stabbing, but police tonight are still looking for the person who killed Willie Williams. ABC 7's Rob Johnson joining us with the story. Rob? Alan, the world-renowned Jesse White Tumblers is an impressive group of young men known for their character and their high-flying exploits. They brought joy to numerous people. Tonight, there is no joy in the organization after one of the Tumblers was killed and another is hospitalized in critical condition. The Jesse White Tumblers thrive with a unique brand of aerial acrobatics and a supportive atmosphere that helps these young men strive to be their best. Tonight, the Secretary of State is devastated and angry. These two gentlemen uh, have spent a lot of time trying to improve their skills so they could be good performers and good people, and yet they fall victim at the hands of someone who did not have any love in their heart for their fellow man. The first incident happened early Saturday outside the Ford City Theaters. 17-year-old Willie Williams III, a junior at Robeson High School, was shot in the head and killed. Just two months earlier, he told his mother he had a disturbing dream. He said, I had a dream, Mama. I said, well, what did you dream about? I dream I got shot in the head. Late Saturday, on the L platform at Austin and the Eisenhower Expressway, 16-year-old Alan Servillian, a sophomore at Michelle Clark Prep, was laughing with his girlfriend when a man, who apparently thought they were laughing at him, stabbed Servillian, damaging his kidney, intestines, and stomach. You can only imagine how, how you would get if someone was to call you and tell you that your son has been stabbed and you need to get to the trauma unit as soon as possible. You know, there's a lot of things that go through your mind. Both had been Jesse White tumblers since they were eight or nine. Both of their mothers are livid with the disregard for human life. You could have hit him, threw him down, or anything if you was angry. Why would you pull a knife and stab a child? When you shoot somebody, you're taking a life. You're affecting the whole family. By the way, Willie Williams' family donated six of his organs. And according to Mr. Servillian, the suspect in his son's case has been caught and is currently at the Oak Park Police Station awaiting charges. And Alan Cathy, Alan Servillian is in critical condition at Loyola Hospital tonight, and he will undergo more surgery tomorrow morning at 9. Okay, Rob, thanks. Commuters helped make the first workday during the Dan Ryan construction project somewhat of a success. Traffic fairly smooth during rush hour this evening. Crews shut down eight of the 14 lanes on Friday night, and many people seemed to listen to the warnings and took alternate routes to help ease the congestion. It was a slow start on the expressway this morning, but it never turned into the gridlock that IDOT said was possible. ComEd has offered some of its workers relief from the two-year construction project, allowing some employees to change their workplace locations to the Oakbrook facility to help them avoid the traffic mess. It makes it a little easier for me at home and for here at work. I don't have to stress about how to get to work or get home. I can focus on my job, help the customers, I can focus on my family. Uh, so it works out both ways. It helps out an awful lot. ComEd offered the workplace change to 25 employees, and they are all expected to take advantage of the option. Coming up later on in this newscast, Cheryl Burton tonight taking a look back at the history of the Dan Ryan and why some neighborhoods resisted the project at the outset. The weather certainly caused plenty of trouble. At least 27 people died in the string of tornadoes that plowed through eight states, including Illinois. Western Tennessee suffering the worst damage and the loss of life there. 23 people died. A police dashboard camera shows just how furious that storm was last night. And strong winds blew out dozens of windows at a bank building in downtown Indianapolis. A number of streets and parking lots were off limits there today. That because of concerns that even more of the bank's windows might fall down to the ground. 
Weather experts have not confirmed that the damage there was caused by a tornado. And the storms killed one person in Illinois. A wall in downstate Fairview Heights collapsed on a customer inside this clothing store after the winds ripped off a section of the roof. And utility crews are still working to restore electricity to thousands of homes and businesses in central and southern Illinois. Police tonight are saying that a suburban woman intentionally drove her car off a bridge, and when officers reached the wreckage, they found the body of the woman's daughter inside. The daughter had been stabbed to death. Police at this point still trying to figure out what happened at the bridge in West Suburban St. Charles. ABC7's John Garcia has been following the story. He is live tonight from the Kane County Sheriff's Office. John? Kathy, according to neighbors, the 34-year-old victim lived at home with her parents. She suffered from cerebral palsy. No one at this point is speculating on what, though, may have led to her violent murder. Authorities tow the gray Hyundai from where it landed upside down alongside a bridge on the Fox River. Police had been on the lookout for the car since getting a 911 call earlier in the morning. But when an officer saw it parked near the bridge, the driver took off and crashed through the railing. Inside, police found a mother and daughter. The mother was injured in a crash, but authorities believe the daughter was already dead. They say that may have been what prompted the 911 call. The sheriff's office responded to a uh, call of a potential uh, domestic situation in unincorporated Campton Township just west of uh, St. Charles shortly before the uh, St. Charles officer encountered the vehicle. Information at the uh, the address we responded to uh, indicated that there may be some potential for some concern. The coroner says the daughter, 34-year-old Nakiambi Witten, died of a stab wound to the chest. Investigators tonight are going through the home where she lived with her mother. Police say there's evidence of some kind of violence here. There was some blood at the, uh, the house, and it, we are not at this time uh, sure of whose blood it is or why it was where it was at or how it came to be there. Neighbors say the family who lives here includes the father and mother, as well as two daughters besides Nakiambi, who they call Kiki. I never heard of any problems over there. The police were never in the area for any reason. So as far as I know, there'd never been any prior incidents. So I you know, don't know what, uh, what caused this. Kane County authorities will say tonight that they are talking to a person of interest. However, they will also tell you that there are no suspects in custody and they have filed no charges at this point. Live in Geneva, John Garcia, ABC 7 News. Alan, Kathy, back to you. All right, John, thanks. Just ahead here tonight, former hostage Jill Carroll thanking her co-workers for the support that she received while held captive in Iraq. Also, for the first time, scientists grow new human bladders. And precious boxes of bling-bling for the world champion <laughs> White Sox. And Jerry says warmer weather is headed our way. Russ wanted the most advanced cancer therapy, and he found it. They fixed Marianne's heart valve without surgery. Rebecca used to be confined to a wheelchair. Look at her now. Remarkable medicine from specialists on faculty at Northwestern University. It's yours when you choose a primary care doctor with Evanston Northwestern Healthcare. That's why I chose. I chose. That's why I chose an Evanston Northwestern Healthcare doctor. Choose your doctor online or call 847-570-5020. I'm a pretty lucky guy. Once, I found a sock full of nickels in the belly of a shark. And last night, I got a snake bite for free. And today, I'm getting an eight-ounce sirloin for $11.99. Ah, what a beaut. The highest quality USDA choice. This is going to keep my taste buds busier than a one-eyed cat watching two mouse holes. I'm Jose Sanders. And I'm Judy Sue. Tomorrow at 5 a.m., what to expect from the next generation of cell phones. And a live preview from the sale as the White Sox get ready to receive their World Series rings. Out tomorrow, along with weather and traffic on the 7s, beginning at 5 a.m.
ABC 7 News at 10 continues with Kathy Brock, Ron Majors, Cheryl Burton, weather with meteorologist Jerry Taft, and sports with Mark G. and Greco. A federal jury has decided that al-Qaeda conspirator Zacharias Musawi is eligible for the death penalty. Musawi already pleaded guilty, and he may have sealed his own fate when he voluntarily took the stand and claimed to know all about the 9-11 plot. In fact, he called the burning Twin Towers gorgeous. As he was let out from court today, he shouted, You'll never get my blood. God curse you all. Starting Thursday, the same jury will begin hearing testimony on whether Musawi will actually be executed, and some of that testimony will come from families of 9-11 victims. A very emotional homecoming for former hostage Jill Carroll as she visited the Christian Science Monitor today. It was the first time that Carroll had been to the paper or met her colleagues at the home office. She was a freelancer when she was taken captive in Iraq, and the paper made her a staffer during her 82 days of imprisonment. The Monitor released a short video of the meeting that happened today. Carol choked up while thanking her co-workers for all their support. I just want to say how much I'm overwhelmed by how wonderful the paper has been, my family and everyone. The work you all went a spokesperson from the paper says that Carol is not yet ready to tell her story publicly, but he says she already is fielding book offers. Word out tonight about Tom DeLay, the congressman, Republican, who's been scarred by scandal, that he's reportedly retiring. An unnamed Republican official is quoted by the Associated Press as saying that DeLay has decided not to seek re-election. And according to the official, DeLay will disclose his plans tomorrow. He has been implicated in a lobbying scandal and was forced to step down from his post as House Majority Leader. Just ahead here tonight, Jerry's talking 60s. But first, a look at the Dan Ryan Expressway from the very first day that it opened. ABC7 show Burton tonight, taking us back in time. Also, Madonna's Chicago stop on her world tour. How soon fans can get their tickets. And in sports, the Cubs put on a command performance for the Commander-in-Chief. We're in Cincinnati for opening day. What did you watch on TV last night? Nothing. I lost my remote. I mean, I looked high and low for that remote. Like, it just vanished. Poof. Into thin air. Looked above the bookshelf, out in the car, under the thingy by the frog statue. It was, like, ridiculous. New Yo Play Light Thick and Creamy. Mm. The first light yeah, yogurt so thick enough to hug a spoon. How does a remote get in a freezer? I mean... Now Yo Play's great taste in Yo Play Light Smoothie. Introducing Red Zone Clear Gel, our strongest clear gel ever. Old Spice. At Ford, we believe that you should get more. That's why we build the Ford 500 to be the safest car on the road. And the Ford Freestyle to get the best fuel economy in its class. Get into a new 500 or Freestyle with 0% financing for 60 months. That's 0 for 60 on the Fords that are built right here in Chicago. Ford 500 and Freestyle, built for Chicago, built for the road ahead.
Tonight's special segment, the debut of the Dan Ryan Expressway. It's been more than 40 years since drivers first hit the expressway. ABC 7 Cheryl Burton tonight is joining us with a flashback <laughs> to the 60s. Cheryl. Kathy, the year was 1962. John F. Kennedy was president. The Rolling Stones debuted in London, and To Kill a Mockingbird was hot at the box office. But here in Chicago, 1962 holds another significance. It would mark the opening of the Dan Ryan Expressway. It would be the next big thing to hit Chicago. 14 lanes stretching 11.6 miles from 95th Street on the south to Roosevelt on the north. It cost just over $25 million per mile uh, in, the, in early 1960s dollars. Money played a big role in even choosing a permanent name for what had been called the North-South Expressway. Daniel Ryan held um, the same position that John Stroger does today, that is chairman of the Cook County Board. He was the man who got the local funding basically pushed through local government so that the Dan Ryan could be built. Dan Ryan died in 1961 before it was completed, but his widow, Mildred, was on hand December 15, 1962, to cut the ribbon and open the new roadway. The brainchild of former Mayor Richard J. Daley, the project sealed his reputation as a city builder. No city stands still. The original design called for it to plow through Bridgeport, the south side neighborhood that Mayor Daley called home. Instead, the path was rerouted, leaving Bridgeport untouched. Mike Royko, in one of his books about Mayor Daley, claimed that not only did he not want the expressway going through Bridgeport, but he also wanted to keep a specific divider between uh, the whites and the blacks. Of course, the Daly administration at the time said that really what they were trying to do was get rid of a uh, inelegant turn in the expressway. The Chicago Defender printed the new expressway knives through the Negro community. One neighborhood of African Americans known as the Black Bottom was wiped out altogether. They lived near and worked primarily in the Maxwell Street corridor. But when Dan Ryan was conceived and constructed, those people were displaced immediately. Author and longtime civil rights activist Timuel Black blames the project for contributing to job loss and poverty for many of the city's African Americans. He recalls that even though residents received some compensation because of the eminent domain laws, this was a time when blacks were restricted from buying or even renting in many of Chicago's neighborhoods. Many of them went to double up with relatives. Some of them went to uh, southwest suburbs where they knew people. As they built the public housing in the 60s, many of them were eligible for public housing. But while jobs were drying up, transportation experts say the new Dan Ryan made an important impact on the economy. It connected Southside residents to downtown jobs. By adding the Dan Ryan, it opened up new opportunities. Uh, people started looking elsewhere. At that time, the traffic levels were not nearly what they are today. Well, another little known or unknown, perhaps long forgotten piece of trivia about the Dan Ryan Expressway. In April of 1967, a tornado crossed over the Dan Ryan during rush hour right around 79th Street. Now, fortunately, there was enough warning, so the traffic was light, and Captain Allen, no one was injured, and that tornado ended up dying over Lakeshore Drive or into the wow. lake. Yeah. All so, right, sure. Quite a history lesson. History. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah thanks. On the Health Beat tonight, what is being described as a breakthrough development is holding promise for people on a waiting list for donor organs. Researchers have used living tissue cultivated in a lab to rebuild human bladders. And in fact, these organs have already been transplanted into seven patients. Doctors say they're all doing well. The lead researcher says the results are suggesting that tissue engineering could one day be a solution to the shortage of donor organs. However, some scientists are stressing that growing other organs may indeed be more challenging because they're so specialized in their functions. Madonna has mapped out her summer concert tour and it includes a stop in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, there she is, the material girl turned dancing queen. Hits the road on May 21st for her Confessions concert tour. She brings the show to the United Center on the 14th of June. The cheap seats are going to sell for $55 a piece. Those are the cheap ones. You can expect to pay $350 for the best vantage points. 
Tickets go on sale on Friday. Expect them to pay three. Three hundred fifty. Three. <laughs> a little better than the than the view from what the third. She's the fifty-five in, dollar seats. Yeah. yeah, she's still in great shape. She's though. what forty-seven, I think. Forty-seven. I know she's in her mid forties. Yeah. yeah. Which means that your shape. kids may not know who she is. Uh, they do. <laughs> they it depends do. on they which do. kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, we had clouds today. We had rain uh, last night, early this morning. It's all gone. We have clear skies across the area right now. And that will make uh, temperatures feel a little bit colder tonight with the clear skies. We'll be down near 30 here in the city. Some of the outlying areas will be in the upper 20. So everything has moved off to the east. Currently 43, officially at O'Hare. The wind west, 8 miles an hour. Humidity 47%. We had a low today of 39 and a high of 54. So we're actually 1 degree above normal. And it looks like really over the next 7 days we're going to average slightly above normal so we get rid of some of these below normal temperatures that we've seen the record high for this date 81 currently 47 at the lakefront 43 midway 43 o'hare 39 in plainfield 38 in lyle of course the rain we needed it about an inch and a quarter of piatone two-thirds of an inch at midway officially at o'hare over an inch and a tenth so we saw quite a bit of rain but we needed it now the rain is all off and as i mentioned we have Clear skies across the area. There's plenty of rain up and down the east coast, but the heaviest showers and thunderstorms now are starting to move out into the Atlantic. You can see the next system sitting way back to the west with some rain along the west coast. Eventually, that will be coming toward us, but not until Thursday. So we have a couple of days of some pretty decent weather. As a matter of fact, when this high pressure stabilizes itself across the area tomorrow, we're going to see nothing uh, but sunshine. Temperatures in the mid-50s. The winds are still out of the northwest, so only in the mid-50s. But if you look out to the west, temperatures in the 60s, and we will be getting a little bit warmer. Tonight, clear, chilly, northwest winds diminishing. Overnight low, averaging around 30. Tomorrow, sunny, pleasant. Northwest winds, high temperature tomorrow in the mid-50s. Up to 60, mostly sunny on Wednesday. With some clouds coming in Wednesday night, cloudy Thursday, showers late in the day, a couple of thunderstorms Thursday night into early Friday, Friday near 60 with a little bit of rain. And then we get back to some sunshine over the weekend with highs in the 50s Saturday, close to 60 on Sunday and in the 60s on Monday. So for this time of year, it's actually a pretty good yeah. idea. It's a beautiful thing. 50s and 60s Six. across mm, the yes, board. I love it. <laughs> Mid-60s there too, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Right. Thank you. Just ahead right here, opera. It certainly can be challenging for adults, but how about for children? Coming up here, Chicago kids getting a crash course in the art of opera. And I'm Mark and Greco. Coming up in sports, D. Brown, the point guard of renown. That and more. Stay with us. Weather on ABC7. Brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Nothing is more powerful than the truth. And the truth is, more Americans choose Chevy than any other brand. See why during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. Check out Chevy Cobalt LS with an EPA estimated 34 highway miles per gallon. Lease an 06 Chevy Cobalt Coupe LS for around $159 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Or get it for less during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Excuse me, what's Sprint's new fair and flexible plan? Unlimited night calling starts at 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? You guys should really be making a big deal about this. Leonard? <clears throat> 7 p.m. Unlimited night calling now starts at 7 p.m. with Fair and Flexible. So you control your plan. It doesn't control you. Available on Sprint or Nextel products. What the people need is a way to make them smile. It ain't so hard to do if you know how. Oh, wow. Listen to the music. Oh, wow. Listen to the music. All the time. Come listen to the music. Call 1-800-BRANSON or visit explorebranson.com. Every day. Focus on the needs of people and keep at it. 
For the first time in 21 years, the governor raised graduation standards in math, science, and writing. Illinois will be the first state to guarantee access to quality health care for all of our children. He protected drug coverage for over 200,000 seniors, including my grandma. He raised the minimum wage. He expanded pre-K, and that really helped my children to learn. It's wonderful to have a governor to fight for our children, our families. Nice start to the Cubs season. Should save some of these runs. How about that? What happened last year? Right? Yeah. That's right. Hey, great news on this opening day. The Cubs rout the hapless Reds. They're going to the World Series. Oh, boy. <laughs> to Cincy. Yeah, George W. throwing out the first pitch to set the tone for the Cubs. W. Looked like Carlos Zambrano there. Already 2 nothing in the first. Matt Merton blasts a three-run shot to left center. Cubs batted around to take a fat 5 nothing lead. The Reds rally, but then in the sixth, Todd Walker with bases loaded. Slips one through the left side. That scores Ronnie Cedeno and Angel Pagan. Walker a huge day, 3 for 4 with 3 RBI. Then with two on, Derek Lee sends one to left. Where Adam Dunn dropped three balls on the afternoon. Cubs roll. 16-7, Ryan Cheverini's in Cincy with the postgame. It's the youngest opening day roster for the Cubs in 28 years, but these kids can hit, starting with Matt Merton, who homered in his first opening day start. I fell behind the count early. I was trying to stay back. He ended up leaving the slider up in the zone a little bit, and I was able to stay through it and drive it. I'm just glad I didn't try and do too much with it. We got some young kids who can really play, and uh, um, I think when, when you come out with predictions, obviously you predict the the teams that have the veteran guys that approve themselves and I think that's kind of uh, what's good for us is uh, we're going to sneak attack. I mean you'd like to see that from a young player you know to get off to a good start sort of break the ice you know get those first hits first RBIs first home run everything so um, this is a very productive day we got a number of hits like I said the only down part we played good defense except for you know one play. The only concern Dusty Baker had after the game was the fact that his pitching staff combined for 10 walks and Carlos Zambrano gave up five runs in just four and two thirds. They're going to need him to pitch better than that with both Mark Pryor and Kerry Wood out. At Great American Ballpark, Ryan Cheverini, ABC 7 News. Okay, Ryan. Hey, Sox championship rings arrived today. There's Barney. Yep, I got it covered. As for Jerry, well, we all know that team jewelry is not his department. My wife designed the ring. And uh, as she did with five of the six Bulls rings, and uh, fortunately, I, I like the rings. And if I didn't like the rings, I would say I like the rings anyway. <laughs> Very smart man. The national championship of college basketball finally being decided tonight, and it's all Gators rocking the RCA Dome in Indy. We go to the simulator. Torian Green, the alley-oop to Al Horford for the slam. UCLA then on the break, but Michael Fay is rejected by Joe Kim Noah. They go the other way. Lee Humphrey with the lay-in. Florida is rolling over the Bruins right now. Gators got your granny. They're late in the second half. Earlier today, the Illini's D. Brown was presented with a Bob Cousy Award as the the nation's best point guard. D said he's just humbled to be among the great group of candidates. Well, by no means, I, you know, I feel I'm the best. I just feel I'm, I'm one. I'm one. I'm, I'm, I'm another great point guard and, that plays the game and love the game. All right, D. Trent Yawning and the Blackhawks in Colorado right now. Second period. This is fast break hockey. Jim Wisniewski, the long lead to Rene Bork. He's in and bang. The Hawks are up 3-2 in the final two minutes of the third. And finally, Red Sox and Tigers in their opener today. Watch this line shot foul. And look at Dad grab the ball while holding his son. And Mom thinks it's cool. Are you kidding? Check out the poor kid's face. Dad grabs it and... Doing here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Give me the glove. Give me the glove. And I couldn't believe the mother's going, Oh, honey, you're go, such go. a hero. You brought him back. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. Just in here tonight, Chicago students playing a very important role in tonight's performance of The Little Prince. Sports on ABC7, brought to you by Evanston Northwestern Healthcare. Choose your doctor at enh.org. I need to have everything in order. I like it neat. I like it clean. A place for everything. 
with everything in its place. Now you can interact online with your family's Evanston Northwestern Healthcare doctors. Send messages, make appointments, check records, all in one place. It's perfect. To learn more, visit enhfirst.org. Luna is the proud sponsor of Spanish closed captioning on ABC7 News. Act now and get two rooms of beautiful carpet for the price of one. 773-202. Luna. When good and evil collide, take them. The greatest adventure of all begins. The Chronicles of Narnia, only tomorrow on DVD. Hotel California, let it bleed. Sergeant Pepper, the grooves in these albums are filled with stories. Our stories. American kids growing up. In the heartland. This is our music. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man. The soundtrack of our lives. Like a rolling stone. 97.1 FM. The Drive. Monday, April 10th. Witness a new era in local news. Be there for the ABC7 grand opening of the new State Street Studio. Live entertainment and special guests beginning Monday at 5 a.m. Coming up only on Nightline, a new series, Hooked, America on Meth. Tonight, how the methamphetamine epidemic is hitting the suburbs. One young mother's story. She grew up with all the advantages in life, but meth addiction still took hold of her. Also, the latest on the wild and dangerous weather out in the Midwest. Kathy and Allen, back to you. Well, thanks. Well, children taking on the starring roles tonight in a beloved tale that's been around for more than six decades. They're performing The Little Prince as an opera. Remember that, the story? It's a children's book. Uh, the fifth grade students at Von Humboldt Elementary School performing It's a Fable of Friendship. Jerry, you don't remember that? You don't remember that story at all? Okay, let me familiarize you then with it. The narrator's a pilot. It's an unusual story. He crashes his plane in the Sahara Desert. Then he's trying to fix his plane, and he meets a little boy who says that he's a prince from another planet. Now, does it sound familiar at all? No, I still don't get it. All right. Anyway, the little prince describes this magical journey of going from planet to planet, and uh, the students, as you see, who are learning to play the violin helped in the orchestra. You don't remember that story at all, do you? Well, Mark doesn't remember. Mark you actually didn't. crashed a plane in the desert. <laughs> yep. He actually did. But that's another story. <laughs> that's our report. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Nightline's coming up next. Have a great night. ABC7 is 24-7. Online all the time at abc7chicago.com. Closed captioning of this newscast is brought to you by United. Only one Illinois hospital has been selected by U.S. News and World Report for the honor roll of America's best hospitals. Only one Illinois hospital was selected to be one of just 16 hospitals on that honor roll out of thousands across the nation. Only one hospital in the entire state of Illinois has ever been so honored. Only one hospital is at the forefront of medicine. The University of Chicago Hospitals. Call or visit online. Isn't it about time for an upgrade? Take advantage of the Acura Upgrade opportunity and experience satellite-linked voice-activated technology and special 2.9% APR financing.
I walked out of the basement to see my home totally gone. Nothing but a bunch of lumber and bricks. When something like this happens, you wonder how you're ever going to get your life back. American Family really came through for us. They far exceeded my expectations. You hope you never have a fire. You hope you never have a tornado wipe away your house. But this is what you buy insurance for, is the way we were treated. American Family Insurance. Good guests, good music, good times. You've gotten off dog a little bit this year, and dude has worked its way in. Is there going to be a dude pound? No, no, no. Ryan should have the dude pound, right? Tonight, Seth Green on an all-new Jimmy Kimmel Live, late night tonight, only on ABC. Tonight on Nightline, one step closer, a jury decides Zacharias Massawi can be executed for not preventing 9-11. Is he a villain, a scapegoat, or both? And can he escape the death chamber? Hooked, our new series about America on meth. Tonight, how the fiercely addictive drug is now the scourge of the suburbs, where this mother's life became a nightmare. You don't intend on being an addict. You think to yourself every day, how weak am I, you know? How totally weak am I? <sighs> and storm warning. Spring gets off to an ugly start. Dozens of deaths and more storms could be on the way tonight. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington and Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in Times Square, New York, this is Nightline, April 3rd, 2006. Good evening, I'm Terry Moran. Two huge stories rebounding around Washington tonight. On the political front, the hammer goes down. Former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, once the most feared Republican in Washington, now embroiled in scandal, will announce tomorrow he will not seek re-election to Congress. More on that in a moment. And on the legal front, Zacharias Massawi, the only person charged in connection with the attacks on 9-11, is now one step closer to the death chamber. His long-running trial and sentencing hearings have at times resembled a circus and raised serious questions about whether he's a cold-blooded terrorist or a lunatic. But tonight, the government has overcome some enormous hurdles in its mission to put Zacharias Massawi to death. Just after 4 o'clock this afternoon, a spokesman walked out of the courthouse in Alexandria, Virginia, and announced the jury's verdict. In the case of United States versus Zacharias Musawi, the jury has reached a verdict. With that, jurors found that Zacharias Musawi, a 37-year-old French citizen of Moroccan descent, was eligible under the law for the death penalty, setting the stage for a wrenching courtroom confrontation between him and family members of the victims of 9-11. You probably will hear from 40 or so uh, victim family members. And they'll be in that room with Masawi sitting across the courtroom. That's right. They'll take the stand. They'll be six feet away from him, most likely looking him in the eye as they tell their story. Outside the courthouse in Virginia, some family members rejoiced. Yes, I'm glad that this part is over. I think the jury had a hard thing to do. I think the jury did a darn good job. I describe him like a dog with uh, rabies, um, one that uh, uh, cannot be cured. And the only cure is to, is to put, uh, put, the, put, it, put him or her to, to the death. ABC News producer Jason Ryan was inside the courtroom for the verdict and says Masawi did his best to display his contempt for the proceedings. He was in the back room screaming, and then he finally came out. And he refused to stand up when they read the verdict. They said, well, the defendant, please stand. And he just sat in his chair. After the judge and the jury had left, he yelled, you'll never get my blood. God curse you all. God curse you all. Musawi is the only person to be charged in the U.S. in connection with 9-11. But just who he really is and what, if any, role he really had in the plot are questions that remain shrouded in mystery, a mystery largely of his own making. Prosecutors portrayed him as a ruthless, cold-blooded terrorist chosen by Osama bin Laden himself to infiltrate the U.S. and kill Americans on a mass scale. His own lawyers, who he refuses to speak to, said he was nothing more than a, quote, Al-Qaeda hanger-on, a wannabe, small fry who the government was scapegoating to distract from the failure to bring higher-ups to justice. 9-11 Commission member Tim Romer says Musawi was a genuine terrorist. From the best evidence that the 9-11 Commission put together, uh, we said that he was probably being primed as a possible pilot. 
a pilot that might take over from somebody that looked from al-Qaeda's perspective uh, like uh, he was going to pull out and they needed to put somebody in. But jurors also learned that top al-Qaeda leaders had real doubts about Musawi. He was, it turns out, a headache for his bosses. One of those senior al-Qaeda leaders was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11, who was captured in 2003. In an account of his CIA interrogations read to the jury, Mohammed complained that Musawi was not qualified to be an operative, citing Musawi's failure to follow instructions and poor operational security practices. But all the evidence on both sides paled in comparison to one astonishing moment. What was the key moment in the case, in your judgment, leading to the verdict today? His testimony. The minute he took the stand, opened his mouth, and described his role in the events of 9-11 and training for 9-11, uh, from the government's perspective and probably from the jury's perspective, it was over. Now the jurors have decided that Musawi's crime warrants the death penalty, they will have to answer that stark question, should he be executed? Defense lawyers are expected to portray him as mentally unfit for the death penalty. Where you've got the victims on one hand, and on the other, you're going to hear about the abusive upbringing that Masawi had. You're going to re hear about the problems he had growing up in France. You're going to hear about his uh, vulnerability to fundamental Islamic revolutionary ideas. And you're going to hear, most likely, expert talk about his schizophrenia. And it's these psychological issues that the defense lawyers will dwell on. And that will be their big pitch going forward. 9-11 Commissioner Tim Romer says that for all the troubles this case has seen, the trial of Zacharias Musawi has achieved real results. Hopefully it means some kind of uh, moving on for the 9-11 families who have been so deeply impacted by this. Two, uh, I hope it means that the United States will again wake up and begin to implement the reforms that make our country safer. We're still vulnerable. We still don't have 21st century communication in the FBI. And thirdly, I think it says in a positive way that the justice system can be part of the many tools to fight terrorism. And now we turn to the breaking news on the political beat tonight. Texas Congressman Tom DeLay, known as the hammer for his ruthless enforcement of Republican Party discipline in the House over the years, has decided not to seek re-election. ABC's chief Washington correspondent and anchor of this week, George Stephanopoulos, joins us live. George, Tom DeLay has been fighting for years. He's nothing if not a fighter, spitting defiance at his accusers and his opponents. Why is he quitting now? <laughs> it's a, one calm way of putting it. Uh, listen, he was already indicted in Texas for campaign finance violations. He fought through that. He fought through a primary battle. But he looked at the race he was facing in November, looked at internal polls, and was very concerned that this was a race he could not win. And he was facing some pressure from Republican officials inside Texas, uh, fearing they would lose that seat. Combine that with the fact that the prosecution related to the Jack Abramoff lobbying scandal had not ended yet. It had already implicated two of his top aides from the majority leader's office and was closing in on a third. Tom DeLay said that he had been told by prosecutors that he wasn't a focus of this investigation, but there was no telling what could happen as the prosecutors closed their net. And then I think finally, Terry, he wanted to take away an issue from the Democrats. He is a tough partisan, as you said. He thought if he stayed in the race, he would allow Democrats to nationalize the race over the issue of corruption. He wanted to take that weapon away from them. So he had become the poster child for Democrats who are trying to make corruption the issue against Republicans. What does his dropping out mean for the battle for control of Congress this year in the, in the elections? Hard to know. I think it's delays calculation is that it will make it a little bit harder for the Democrats to nationalize that election, as he said. But they'll, the Democrats are already putting out statements tonight where they say this is just one in a series of Republicans who have demonstrated that culture of corruption. They're not going to let it go. All right, the battle continues, but Tom DeLay pulling out tonight. George Stephanopoulos, thanks very much. And now we turn to my co-anchor, Cynthia McFadden, who's in New York with the start of our new series, Hooked. Cynthia? Good evening, Terry. Tonight we investigate moms on meth, how the highly addictive drug is now pulling down women in the suburbs on a new series, Hooked. And Twister, lots of twisters, even more tornado warnings tonight. Will it only get worse? ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Sprint. 
In between practice runs, it's a scramble to modify Tony's car.